I'm Michael O'Loughlin, National Correspondent for America Media, and you're watching Behind the Story. This week, the United States kicks off what will become its largest vaccination program in history, with frontline medical workers receiving the first doses of the newly approved COVID-19 vaccine. In the coming months, more doses are expected to be available, and next year the general population should have access. The vaccines have been hailed by Catholic leaders from the Vatican to groups of bishops in the United States and Canada. But given the incredibly fast speed at which the vaccines were developed, some people have questions about them, including the moral imperative they have to be vaccinated. Joining us today to answer some of those questions is Dr. Moira McQueen, Executive Director of the Canadian Catholic Bioethics Institute. Dr. McQueen advises Catholic bishops, some of whom re recently released a letter urging Catholics to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Dr. McQueen, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. Happy to be here. So we'll start with a pretty straightforward question. Should Catholics feel comfortable being vaccinated against COVID-19? I think they should feel very comfortable. I think especially since these first vaccines that have been developed comply with what many of us are calling ethical vaccines. So for a while, it looked as if who knew which particular vaccines would come to the fore. And there could have been uh, moral, ethical questions about them. Some people have raised legitimate questions. And as it happens with Pfizer and Moderna being among the very first, that relieves that particular problem for most people, I would say. I'm wondering uh, if you could briefly explain what some of those ethical, ethical concerns could have been uh, and why they aren't part of these two vaccines that are expected to be available uh, pretty soon. Sure. So the main problem for many people is that so many uh, pharmaceuticals and vaccines are made using either cells from aborted fetuses or from destroyed human embryos or from tissue from aborted fetuses. And so the thought is, since we feel so very strongly about the importance of life from conception until natural death, that to use products that are sort of based, if you like, on, on parts of human bodies, uh, that's just totally unacceptable, that we would profit, if you like, from experiments done on something like an aborted fetus. It's an affront to the, that little person's dignity. And so Catholic teaching is clear about that. Uh, and I think it speaks again to the sacredness with which we hold life, that we wouldn't want to knowingly use anything that came from that sort of source. So that's really the, the very bottom line. And I, I can see why that, uh, why that is such an important issue and continues to be an important issue. It's far from secondary, even when it comes to something like tackling a really severe illness like COVID-19. So the, the question of the, not just the safety of these vaccines, which is of really high importance as well, of course, because we need to be very sure, which is why they're tested by the FDA in the States and other countries as well, by other bodies. But the, the moral, the ethical aspects are, I would say, almost more important from the point of view of Catholics, and not just Catholics, there are many other people who also take that dignity of human life really, really seriously. So it does pose a question. But you mentioned that these uh, two vaccines that are expected to be available pretty soon, the Pfizer vaccine, which is out now, and the Moderna vaccine, which should be out in the US uh, relatively soon. You said that those vaccines, there are not moral questions about them when it comes to their origin or their testing, that Catholics should feel comfortable getting them. These MNRA va uh, vaccines, uh, you know, being synthetic, everybody is very clear and people should know that they're certainly not then using any kind of tissue or cells from aborted fetuses or destroyed embryos. So that's what makes them what most of us are considering to be ethical. Part of the, uh, what I would now call a secondary ethical question, although it's still a, le a legitimate one, is how the vaccines are tested. And we, as far as we hear from people who, scientists who are checking and moderating these events, then sometimes it's really hard to know if some of these cells are actually used in the testing process. They tell us that so many of the ordinary pharmaceuticals that we already use, among other products, are also tested with these cells. And on the whole, we don't know. And as the sort of unsuspecting public, 
we don't ask those kinds of questions. So at one level, it's pretty good. I think that questions about these vaccines have come to the fore. They came to the fore a few years ago with the measles vaccine and people know a little bit about that. But the question of testing is, I really see that as a very separate issue. I think the relief that I mentioned at the beginning comes from the fact that we know that there are no components from human bodies in the actual vaccine that we will be receiving. And if or are not, if they're not used uh, in the testing, that being a secondary issue, I would call it a secondary issue anyway, I don't think it raises the same ethical question. I and, could, and I guess could, just talking vaccines more broadly, why, why do Catholics have a moral obligation to be vaccinated uh, when it comes to Catholic social teaching and helping the common good? What, why should Catholics get vaccinated? Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it really is the common good. I think first and foremost, for most of us as a parent, my kids are young, I took them all to be vaccinated against all these illnesses that have been prevalent, you know, over the past hundred years. And we know that they work, they're effective, all that kind of thing. So of course we do the best we can to make sure all of us are as healthy as possible for ourselves and our families, but also for other people. Uh, I think uh, the Canadian bishops, for example, emphasize this, the common good aspect in their pastoral letter, encouraging people to be vaccinated, because not only do I have that moral responsibility to look after my own health and my family's health, I really do have a responsibility towards other people. So I can't think of it as something to be refused only on the basis that I don't want to take it uh, there are real consequences from that, both for myself. I would have to go into isolation then. The, the English and Welsh bishops are saying, if people refuse vaccines, then to be responsible, they more or less have to stay in their house and don't leave it, because then they could pose a danger to other people. So we, I don't think as a moral question, we can leave it just to the basis of individual choice. You know, I don't want to have the vaccine. I think there's something wrong with the vaccine. I think it's a much broader issue. There's more knowledge to be explored and to be gained. And from a Catholic teaching and Catholic social teaching perspective, there's very definitely an emphasis on looking after the common good. And that should feature in any moral decision that any of us make. I mean, that's Catholic teaching in itself, that that aspect should feature. We're talking to Dr. Moira McQueen, Executive Director of the Canadian Catholic Bioethics Institute about uh, COVID-19 vaccines and why Catholics should feel okay and in fact see it as a moral obligation to be vaccinated. Uh, another question I had was, we have seen some disinformation about vaccines, uh, whether it's about their origin or how they're applied to Catholic social teaching, uh, spread by ordinary people, some faith leaders even, and I'm just curious, how do you think Catholics should respond to disinformation? What's the best way to sort of combat uh, information out there that's not entirely correct when it comes to vaccination programs? Yeah, because this misinformation, disinformation, uh, that, that doesn't help anybody. I mean, not, not at all. And I think we have an obligation then, as usual, within Catholic teaching uh, to be sure about the scientific facts and also the moral facts as expounded by Catholic teaching itself. And this is, if you like, this is straight from Thomas Aquinas, that we have to know reality. So therefore, we, we are really um, duty bound to know a little bit about the science. I'm not a scientist. I couldn't explain the vaccines in the way that they can. But of course, we rely on their information as we rely on other people's information for everything else. And so to know that, for example, that there are these vaccines that they say there are no components from human bodies in them, that is number one, I think, in, in, again, relieving people's consciousness because it's a legitimate question about the morality of the vaccines, very, very much so. And then the other side of it is to know what church teaching is. And so, in, again, in terms of how I would be teaching it uh, in, in grad school, then we always start at the level of church teaching and not, if you like, from the ground up. If we want to know what the Catholic Church says, then we, we find out. And it's been very interesting that the Pontifical Academy of Life has made statements about the reception of possibly otherwise compromised vaccines. 
both in 2004 or five, I think, and 2018. Both in response actually to questions about the measles vaccines, but actually it's the same basic principle that's at work here. Can we use a vaccine even, and this is taking it a step further, even if there were some human components in the vaccine itself in light of a very serious illness. And in both cases, the Pontifical Academy of Life said that because there is the threat of grave illness and if there are no ethical vaccines available, so there's always more than one factor at work, then given a grave reason, serious illness, then we should feel confident in taking these vaccines. And that would be even if there were sort of dubious components. They always remind us that we have the obligation to speak out and to governments, for example, to request ethical vaccines and to sort of witness to the fact that we are concerned about the components, that, that sort of approach. And I think that's very, very important. And the other, the other very interesting aspect uh, comes from a long-standing Catholic principle called cooperation in evil. And you know, Mike, I think this is perhaps where some of the questions stem from, from many loyal Catholics, uh, because even the name cooperation in evil <laughs> strikes a strange note for people. And I think that my own experience is that many people don't really understand the principle. It's not their fault, it maybe hasn't been explained, but nonetheless, it's a long-standing principle. And it does mean, again, that there could be situations where there are uh, areas which you would rather not either use or be involved in, but because of the circumstances in which you find yourself and assuming that there's a serious reason for such cooperation, then morally you can go ahead and do it. And I think that particular principle needs to be explained in, in really great detail. I think it would really help people because it's a, a lot of information out there for Catholics to kind of read and educate themselves and a lot of nuanced information that uh, might provide some good food for thought as Catholics consider how to respond to this different disinformation that's out there online about vaccines. Uh, and just in the last uh, couple minutes we have, uh, you know, come spring and summer, there'll be uh, widespread vaccination programs in Canada and the United States, we hope, that the general population can take advantage of as we try to uh, beat back the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. And I'm just curious, if, if a faith leader were to come to you and say, I really want to encourage uh, my congregation, maybe there's some skeptical people to really get on board with the vaccination program. What's uh, what's a kind of simple uh, pithy me message that you can uh, advise them to preach to kind of, you know, encourage people to get behind this safe and morally uh, acceptable vaccination program? I think I think it would be two part. One part would be science. One part would be faith. And the science part would be I would strongly emphasize the fact that there are no components of any human tissue or cells in the particular vaccines that seem to be available and that people should request those ones because we know they are available. Therefore, you have to request them if they are available. And the second part on the faith side, I would say, let's look at official Catholic teaching and see how they reassure us about all these issues about vaccines in terms of extreme danger. Okay, so yeah, early on in the pandemic, we saw uh, many Catholic leaders talking about the importance of wearing masks to protect the common good, and we'll probably see something similar when it comes to vaccines uh, early next year. Uh, Dr. Moira McQueen, the Executive Director of the Canadian Catholic Bioethics Institute, uh, thank you for joining us today, and thanks for your insight about uh, vaccination and Catholic social teaching. I'm Michael O'Loughlin, National Correspondent for America Media. For more reporting on this story, visit americamedia.org, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.